to you by Perez Tire Center, Aces Bail Bonds, Miranda and Sons Automotive, Bridgeport Auto Glass, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, Haas Funeral What's up, you guys? Welcome to Super Elite Entertainment. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. So excited to be here broadcasting live from the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. This is something we do on a weekly basis. We love broadcasting from our studio located in Bridgeport. We love coming into your home, whether it's through your iPad, your iMac, or whether your desktop computer. And I'm excited tonight because I have State Representative Chris Rosario here in the studio tonight. And um, you're going to be in for a really, really good show. Really quick, I want to remind you guys, as I do on a weekly basis, if you're tuning in right now on Anchor Podcast, on our Spotify Podcast, or Apple Podcast, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Perez Tire Center, all right, is slashing the competition in the state of Connecticut, but most, most importantly, in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, with a $45 full vehicle alignment. If you need tires, if you need rims, contact Perez Tire Center right there at 72 Knowlton Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Also, ACES Bail Bond, located at 1125 North Avenue in Bridgeport. Yasmin Khan, quick response, 24-7, easy payment. 203-257-6228, call Yasmin Khan at ACES Bail Bond if you need their assistance. Also, keep in mind that they speak Espanol, all right? Also, Miranda and Sons Automotive, if you need brakes, electrical system, diagnosis check, head gasket, AC service, tune-ups, front end, struts, full general auto repairs, Call Louis Miranda at Miranda and Sons Automotive there at 360 Avon Street in Stratford, Connecticut at 203-290-4883. Also, I need to mention Ramirez Spanish Restaurant. If you like me and you like to eat some of that Spanish food, you know, Acapulia, some of that Dominican food, right? Yeah. All right. Contact uh, Ramirez Restaurant right there at 1234 East Main Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where they specialize in seafood and churrasco. And finally, Bridgeport Auto Glass, located at 1227 Barnum Avenue in Bridgeport, Connecticut. If you need new glass on your vehicle, contact Bridgeport Auto Glass at 203-916-7990. Again, I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez, and I want to welcome each and every one of you to live with Jason Rodriguez. We are here broadcasting out of the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Tonight we have Chris Rosario in the studio, going to be sitting on the hot seat. Man, the lights are bright. Let's see how Chris does. I know he's going to kill it. But anyhow, with that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to pick up pick up where we left off at. We'll be right back momentarily. Don't go anywhere, guys. Looking for custom wheels? Looking for quality and professional service? Do you need a flat tire repaired? Are you looking for a $45 alignment and the lowest prices in the state? Come to Perez Tire Center located in the city of Bridgeport. At Perez Tire Center, we take pride in our selection and service. We are never short on inventory, and we give you the best guaranteed lowest prices up front. At Perez Tire Center, we slash the competition and will beat the other guys. Financing is available, and no credit check is needed. We also install batteries and tires on recreational vehicles, trailers, and motorcycles. If you need it, we got it. Perez Tire Center is open seven days per week, located at 72 Knowlton Street in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. All right, you guys, welcome back to Super League Entertainment. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez, and again, we are here broadcasting from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, the city that I love dearly. And um, our studios here is located 
in Bridgeport. And this is a platform that has been created for you, the people of the community. And we do this on a weekly basis to bring you some hope, some inspiration, some encouragement, and also some Chris Rosario, who's here on the hot seat. Without further ado, I just want to read a statement that I have in regards to Chris Rosario. Chris Rosario was born in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. He graduated from Harding High School. At 33, he became the youngest department head for the uh, city of Bridgeport, working in the administration office under the uh, Mayor Bill Finch. Rosario is the former director of the Anti-Blight and Illegal Dumping for the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. In 2008, Chris helped organize the Alpha Community Services annual walk to end homelessness. Chris Rosario is a Democratic party um he's a member of the connecticut house of representatives representing the district 128th district of the city of bridgeport connecticut he assumed his post january 7th of 2015 and he is currently in term which ends january 6th of 2021 hopefully all that information is accurate chris but without further ado i want to bring it to the picture my good friend chris rosario thank you for having me jason uh here at beautiful SEST Studios, uh, Super Elite Entertainment. I've been to a lot of studios across the state of Connecticut, but I tell you, uh, yours is one of the best in the state. So I want to oh. thank you for providing great uh, community content for the city of Bridgeport and beyond. Thank you, Chris. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your willingness to come down to the studio to be a part of the show. As you know, this is a platform that we created here in the city of Bridgeport about a year ago. And um, so far it's been going well. We have all kinds of different politicians, uh, community activists, you name it individuals like yourself sitting on the hot seat and um i'm excited to have you here tonight well, i'm glad to be here i know i've seen your work from afar we've done a, a lot of work on the boxing end i know you uh have a great background in boxing we did a lot of work with the uh state boxing commission on mixed martial arts and we've been very successful on that end uh bringing mixed martial arts to the city of bridgeport uh there was an event at the arena that we were uh able to host with bellator mohegan sun and uh you had a great part in doing that Excellent, man. So well, let's jump right into it. Let's, let's not even waste any time. All right, let's go. We're going to talk first about who is Chris Rosario. All right. Growing up in the city of Bridgeport, right here in the east side, we have something in common. We graduated the same school system, yep. the city of Bridgeport school system. We both attended Harding High School. Yes, we did. Let's pick up there. Who is Chris Rosario? Well, Chris Rosario is someone, that, as you mentioned, born and raised in the city of Bridgeport, uh, raising my family here. Uh, Caroline Street, east, uh, east side of Bridgeport. Um, didn't have it easy growing up, uh, but uh, persevered and, and was able to find a passion in uh, public service. And, and, and through that, uh, it's been opened a lot of doors for me. Uh, I want to thank my family, uh, my wife, Kathy Rosario, who's here in the studio tonight. Big shout out to her. Uh, my family, my friends, my supporters for, for always having, having my back, uh, whatever challenges I face. Excellent. So couple of questions for you, Chris. The thing I like about you so much is that you're Latino, born, what, where were you born in Bridgeport? Born and raised. Born and raised in Bridgeport, raised. just like me. So you're Latino, born and raised in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, right in, in the hood. Let's keep it real. Caroline Street. Caroline Street. <laughs> Sherman Street. Father Panic. P.T. Barnum. Born and raised in those er in that environment. But yet, you were able to succeed. You were able to overcome the environment that you grew up in. What was your greatest influence? Well, my greatest influence, I, I'd say there were a lot of community leaders uh, growing up, but also uh, even, even some of those people that were that were in the streets and, and, and doing some of the things that, that weren't right, they, they saw that I had a passion, I had a talent, uh, and every time that I would try and sway and go in that direction, they would say, this isn't for you, we don't want you here. Uh, and and they, they were the first ones to say, you know, get out from the street, get out from the corner, uh, you have great, greater things in store. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you, you can be a product of your environment or you can uh, get out of that environment and make a positive change. And I chose to take that path. The thing I also like about you, and is I keep mentioning things I like about you because you're an influential person. You're a man of character, a man of integrity, and you're a man who believes in what he is fighting for. You represent the city of Bridgeport. You represent all the, the citizens of the city of Bridgeport. And, and listen, I've seen, I watch your videos. I see the, you know, the stuff that's put out there, whether it's in the newspaper, on TV, whether it's WTNH Channel 8, News 12, whatever. You always are willing to fight for what's right. You're always willing to stand up for the community. And um, I just love your, your, your tenacity, you know, where you're gonna fight until you win. Where does that come from? Well, I, I give great credit to that to my mother. Uh, my mother was a, a widowed a mother of three. My father died when I was 10 years old. 
uh, and to, to, be, to be growing up in that environment wasn't easy. Uh, and there was, no, uh, there was no safety net. It was either you survive or you didn't. Mm -hmm. And I bring a lot of those hard work and qualities to, uh, to government, uh, to everything I do in life. Uh, the persistent and consistent. I'm gonna keep on you, I'm gonna be tenacious, and uh, I'm gonna get the job done. What I wanna do right now is I wanna show the people that are watching, the viewing audience, a video. It's a sure. quick little video, I think it's about maybe two, two and a half minutes long, a video of you showing you in action. Sure. There at the state legislation, of, you know, in the Capitol. Um, quick little blurb, because um, I want the people to understand that when you say something, you're the type of person that when you say it, you follow through, you bring it to completion, you're a man of your word. And uh, that's the thing that I really like about you, Chris. So with that said, I'm going to show this quick video. All right. All right. Good. All right. So you guys that are watching, I have Chris Rosario, state rep here in the studio with us. I'm so excited. Enjoy this video. Chris Rosario himself. State Representative Christopher Rosario of the 128th District in Bridgeport. I'm here this morning at Radio Cumbre, uh, Bridgeport's oldest and longest serving Spanish speaking radio station. I'm State Representative Christopher Rosario, and today we're here on a session day. We have a really packed agenda today. State Representative Christopher Rosario of the 128th District in Bridgeport, and today we're here at the demolition of 677 Noble Avenue on the east side of Bridgeport. This has been a property that has been a long source of quality of life issues, lots of crime, drugs, and today working in concert with Mayor Bill Finch of the city of Bridgeport, our local council people, were able to get this eyesore out of the community. Good morning, bienvenido to the 128th district. This is the heart of my district. Every day is a good day, but Bridgeport day is the best day. And I believe we have the best city in the state of Connecticut. So I, it's an honor to serve along with this delegation. We have some great senators, the rest of our House delegation. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for your advocacy to come up here. We fight for you guys each and every day. Announced the appropriation of some youth violence prevention dollars to Caribe youth leaders. We know that this organization is not only a leader when it comes to athletics, but also academia. I was born and raised here on the east side of Bridgeport, and I was a product of the McGinney Center. Uh, I, I, I lived down the street, and I used to come here. My nephews came here, my nieces came here, and it was important to me that uh, when I got elected that we fight hard to bring stuff back to our community. I'm offended by some of the words that have been said about these youth violence prevention grant dollars. And I'm gonna tell you about a couple of those programs that are in my district, one of them mainly being the McGivney Center. If it wasn't for the McGivney Center, I wouldn't be here right now. The McGivney Center saved my life. Growing up in Bridgeport in 1990, 1991, 1992, 93, when we led the country in murders, the McGivney Center was the only safe place that my mother knew she could send me from 5 to 8 o'clock at night. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I do have a passion for boxing. Uh, being Puerto Rican, you know, boxing is in our lifeblood along with baseball. And it's something that we follow passionately uh, back on the island and here uh, on the mainland. So, As a Bridgeport native and state representative, my top priority is to help grow the city's economy. That's why in Hartford, I've supported new laws to help small businesses create good paying jobs, ensure equal pay for equal work, strengthen our city's public transit options, and bring in new job creating industry. In order for Bridgeport to get better, we need to make smart investments in the future. Nobody will fight harder for Bridgeporters at the state capitol than me. Because for me, fighting for Bridgeport families is more than a campaign slogan, it's a way of life. My name is Chris Rosario, and I approve this message. All right, and welcome back to Super Elite Entertainment. Chris, what did you think about that video highlighting you? Well, you know, uh, you, you did your homework. You went down <laughs> memory lane. You, you found some uh, some pre-beard pre videos. Uh, I, I would be remiss if not. Uh, uh, I saw some uh, moments that uh, actually, you know, were very touching. I saw my... My, my brother, my late brother, Ezekiel Santiago, right. a representative, uh, and uh, he, I know he's watching down on us, and um, it was an honor to serve with him, and uh, we did a lot, a lot of that, the, that work that, that you saw there, he had a big part in doing that, so yeah. uh, I want to thank him, uh, wherever he is in the universe, in heaven, uh, watching down. Yeah, and um, for example, like the video we've seen, there was a part where you were standing 
First of all, how many people, when, when you're there, what's, what's the name of that area where, where, where you're on the microphone and, and you got all the cameras on you in the Capitol? What's that's that? That's your, uh, your House of Representatives. That's the chamber. We call it the chamber. The chamber. That's the chamber. What is that like? Because, first of all, you got to be bold to stand there and to speak directly to the hearts and to the minds of the people that are, that are, that are sitting there watching and listening. Mind the people that are watching on TV. And you were so bold where you were addressing the concern in regards to the McIvney Center. Yes. Where they were trying to cut the funds. Yes. Boldness. That's what we need at the Capitol. Tell us about that. Well, you know, when, when you get to the state Capitol, it's almost the uh, same feeling. When I, when I walked into that chamber, I could equate it to uh, an athlete walking into Yankee Stadium for the first time, walking into Fenway Park for the first time. If you play basketball, Madison Square Garden. Uh, and if you're in government, and if this is the line of work uh, uh, that you are so passionate and thankful uh, to the people to be uh, elected to represent them, uh -huh. uh, this is your this is your domain. And uh, to be up there to to talk in front of 151 other legislators from across the state, mm -hmm. uh, from many walks of life, you literally have attorneys, farmers, doctors. Uh, Boxers, yeah. Uh, uh, Travis Sims <laughs> is uh, one of my colleagues. Big shout out to Travis Sims okay. from Norwalk. He's uh -huh. a state representative out of Norwalk. So shout out to Travis uh, if you're watching, and, Representative Sims. And, and just to let the people know that are watching, Chris Rosario is a big boxing huge, fan. Huge, huge boxing. Big fan. boxing fan. Huge boxing fan. So, uh, but go, going back to uh, speaking uh, in front of that chamber, uh, it's it's it can it can uh, get nerve wracking. But uh, when you're passionate about something and your community is under attack, and uh, to me, I consider Bridgeport. Uh, Bridgeport's in my heart and soul. It's in my blood. It's in my veins. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't matter. If you're black, white, brown. Uh, if you're a bridge border, I'm going to fight for you, and uh, that's, that's what I do. And, and, that's, and that's something that I really love about you, and what you said, that's what I do, is it's exactly what you mean, because you do fight for the citizens of the city of Bridgeport. I mean, whether, whether it's under pressure or not, I mean, you're always up there alongside Dennis Bradley. Oh, yes, yeah, Senator. And, and, big shout and, out to Senator Bradley. Yeah, yeah, and you guys are always up there, man, just, and you know what, and hold on, I just want to show the people that are watching right now. I printed this, I printed this, right? <laughs> this is... Bills that were introduced in session for year 2019. Bills. Yeah. Page after page. You were part of all of these. Pretty much. Yeah, Pretty much yeah, a good yeah. majority of these, right? Majority of those, yeah. And um, there's a couple of them that stick out to me. For example, an act implementing paid family medical leave program. Um, another one, increasing the, the minimum wage. Yes. That, I mean, that was a big one on your agenda. That was huge. Actually, if I can, if I can give you a snapshot of mm -hmm. that day, uh, did you you saw the video in the chamber? Mm -hmm. We spent 26 hours on that house floor debating that bill and when I tell you no sleep uh, Literally up all day up all night. We started that day uh, 10 a.m. Actually had a podcast interview uh, 10 a.m. That day we went to session 11 a.m. And we didn't get out of session until the following day at 2 p.m. Wow so uh, that's the type of rigor and, and, and endurance that, that you have to do, not only physically, but mentally, uh, to fight on behalf of your community. And, and that, that bill alone, uh, there were parts of it that took into effect in October. So people went from 10, 10 an hour to $11 an hour mm -hmm. starting in October. And I believe it, it jumps up a dollar a year each year for the next five years. So people uh, will get uh, $15 an hour over the next five years. Wow. So you think that, uh you're the type of person that um, you're approachable. You know, you're approachable. And I give you an example. Even when I seen you the other day, it was freezing cold the other day. We were all out there collecting money for La Isla de Puerto Rico. And um, I seen people coming up to you, you know, asking you questions, engaging in conversation with you. I mean, how important is it for you to have that type of encounter with the community? Well, you know, I, I just think it's part of my personality uh, is the way I was raised, the way I was brought up. Uh, I, I treat the janitor the same way as the CEO, mm -hmm. um, and I just love people. I love talking to people. I, I want to be uh, open, have an engagement. I'm very active on social media, uh, on my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter. Um, people DM me. Uh, a lot of people, believe it or not, they, they really don't know what government does for you, whether it's on a local level, on a state level, on a federal level. Um, I have a great relationship with our federal partners, or Congressman Hines, or both our senators, Blumenthal and Murphy. And a lot of folks approach me, uh, not to say that they're not approachable, but you know, it can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. It can be intimidating to go to a city hall, 
to go to your capital, to go to Washington, D.C. Not everybody can get the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C., but um, if I can be that vehicle for somebody to come up to me and say, hey, I need help getting a birth certificate. Hey, I need help getting a pardon. Hey, I'm having some issues with uh, child support. Uh, or whatever the case may be, um, if I can't do it, uh, I will point you in the direction of someone who can. You just mentioned a word that really caught my attention, pardon. Yes. Really important. Um, Ex-offenders, return it back into our community, back to the city streets of Bridgeport. Yes. You know what? There's some guys who end up incarcerated who legitimately have rehabilitated themselves. They're back out in the community. They're seeking and looking for opportunities to advance themselves, to educate themselves, to you know, to to uh, secure employment, to take care of their family members. They've been out five, ten years, and because of their background, they're not able to but to go but so far. How important is it for individuals to be granted, for example, a full unconditional pardon? Well, I, I've been uh, honored or blessed to have had the opportunity to work with many folks from the. Uh, re-entry community. I have uh, close friends and family members that uh, have experienced incarceration and not only uh, being incarcerated but also those challenges that you face when you go back and try to integrate into society. Getting a job, reconnecting with your family, uh, mental health issues, uh, addiction issues, uh, staying off of uh, drugs and alcohol and those are the challenge. Housing. Mm. Uh, so those are the things that I've been working at the Capitol to fight to help folks reintegrate back into the community. Uh, I'm uh, working on a, a few programs and uh, with Lyft, the uh, rideshare company. Uh, there's a pilot happening in Hartford right now, getting folks coming back from reentry, uh, rideshare opportunities to, to go to job appointments, to housing appointments. So I'm working on something on that on the local level here in Bridgeport. But I, I believe that a lot of those folks that have experienced incarceration uh, have been a result of draconian laws of the 90s uh, and, and should not have been incarcerated and to begin with. They should have gotten help, yeah. help, help uh, mental health rehabilitation, mm -hmm. drug re rehabilitation, and uh, uh, we should give those folks the same opportunity. I call the reentry community the hidden workforce. Mm. The hidden workforce. These are folks that are smart, entrepreneurial, uh, and we want to make sure that they get that same opportunity, have those talents, uh, where maybe the school system may have failed them, but uh, they have different talents that they can uh, take advantage of. Yeah. So one thing I want to also visit really quick is, and I mentioned it uh, a little earlier in our conversation, was this past, was it Saturday? Yes. We were there at the East Side Senior Center. Yes. Downtown, I mean, not downtown, in the east side in of Bridgeport. the east side, yeah. Um, right on the corner of East Main and Arctic Street. The old Arctic Sports Shop. The old Arctic Sports Shop. That? That's right. That was across the street. That's Remember right. That? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, that's real East Side. If you're from the East Side, you know what we know what we're talking about. Well, if you know if you know what Casa Grande is, yeah. Uh, remember Casa Grande? Uh, Toyos. Oh, Toyos. Toyos. <laughs> now we're taking it back. Yeah. Same we're Averas. Taking it way back. Same Averas. <laughs> Comment if you remember Same Averas uh -huh. on, on, on East Main there. Yeah. So right there at the old Arctic Sports Shop is now currently the East Side Senior Center. Great establishment, great nonprofit organization right there in the heart of Bridgeport, uh, serving our, our elderly population. And uh, this past Saturday, they held a fundraiser to um, to get funds for our people in the Isla de Puerto Rico who have experienced that tremendous earthquake. A lot of them are homeless, mm -hmm. sleeping in tents. I mean, some of them in are cars. even sleeping on the ground in cars. Sleeping in the cars, yeah. And, um, you know, so a lot of people, the thing that I really like is that a lot of people, the, the community came out, they showed up. It was freezing cold, it was snowing really hard, but they showed up with their donations. I mean, a great amount of money was collected. You were out there on the hustle, holding that bucket, you know, that meant job roll. But, um, you know, it, it, was, it was a great impression to see you with the crowd out there collecting money for our people in La Isla de Puerto Rico. That was, that was, that was really, one of a kind well, on, your, on your behalf. I appreciate that, but also the, the, the main credit, the main credit goes to all the volunteers, all the people that put it together. Uh, too, too many in the name, because uh, you know, uh, blame it on my mind, not, not my heart. <laughs> so I don't want to uh, upset anybody, but there were a lot of volunteers, uh, and that's just a testament of the people of the city of Bridgeport, yep. pero la comunidad puertorriqueña, uh -huh. that when we're in need, we come together. Yep. And uh, we, I'm proud of what we did two years ago with uh, Hurricane Maria, but 
now with the with the earthquake that we were able to in such short notice uh, really have a really successful event. Yeah, it was great, man. Uh, the community came out and they spoke up with their donation. A great amount of money was collected. Bridgeport Police Department was yes. heavily yes. involved in the, in in collecting funds. They were out there in uh, in the middle of the street of Boston Avenue, man. Uh, they were all over East Main Street. There was a Jeep organization that came from New Haven, Connecticut. They were out there bumping their, you know, que bonita bandera. Yeah. And uh, they were out there collecting funds. Uh, you were out there. The city council members, a great majority of the city council members of the city of Bridgeport were out there. And uh, what an exciting time, man. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to be a part of that myself. And with that said, I'm going to show a quick, a quick, quick blurb, a little clip sure. of what took place. And I want to let the people know that while this video was shown, there's going to be a link um, shown across the screen. That's the PayPal link if you want to donate money for the people that are suffering there in Puerto Rico. All right. So don't go anywhere. We're going to show you this quick clip of what took place this Saturday night. I mean, this Saturday morning and afternoon right there at the senior uh, what's it called? The senior East Side Senior Center. East Side Senior Center, right there in uh, East Main Street. We got super elite entertainment here. Shout out! Thank you. All right, Mark. Thank you, my We got uh, State Representative Chris Rosario here outside. Hey, listen, Chris, it's pouring snow out here. We're out here. It's man. cold. It's freezing. But we are here for a good cause. Listen, I want to thank you for coming out and supporting us. We're bringing the Puerto Rican heat. Here to the cold of Bridgeport, Connecticut. A uh, lot of generosity. Uh, the city of Bridgeport have opened up their hearts and their checkbooks for the people of Puerto Rico. We don't forget about our people back home in Nuestra Isla. Uh, and please come on out. We're, we're going to be having a phone line uh, so that people can donate. We're going to get you that so you can post later. Uh, but I want to thank each and every person for donating and uh, opening their, their hearts to the city of Bridgeport. That flag that's in your hand, Chris, how much does that flag mean to you? It means the world to me. That's where my roots are. Ay bonito Puerto Rico. Uh, that's where my, my all my family's there uh, in the greater Ay bonito area. And I, I still have fond memories of my childhood going down there to visit uh, my parents, my grandparents. And uh, they're always in my heart. And you know, it's amazing because the presentation of people that are out here, man, is freezing cold, is snowing, but nothing is stopping us today. Nothing stops us. That's the Puerto Rican spirit. We're strong, we're resilient. Uh, earthquakes, hurricanes, snow, it doesn't matter. Nuestra gente estamos bien poderoso, and we're here to fight. And Chris, one last question for you. How important is it, because I see a lot of different state um, and also city representatives here supporting the cause out here, even in this type of uh, weather. I mean, how important is it for everyone to collaborate and to come together to work for one specific cause? Well, listen, you know what? That's uh, the the American spirit, the Puerto Rican spirit, and the spirit of the people of the city of Bridgeport. doesn't matter uh, whether you're on a city council at the state level or just your regular volunteer. You have people just getting out of their cars, parking their cars, getting out, and grabbing a bucket and collecting money for the people of Puerto Rico and supporting. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Chris. God bless Take you, brother. Care. God bless. Take care. What car club are you? What car club? The Real Family is here. The Real Family? De donde son? De New Haven. De New Haven. ¿Y qué parte de la isla son? De Ponce. De Ponce. Y aquí estamos hoy para? Para Puerto Rico, mi gente, para ustedes. Ya tú sabes. ¡Epa! ¡Epa! All right, we got the president of the Puerto Rican Day Parade here, Frankie Colon. Frankie. It's cold, it's snowing, it is, but man. nothing is stopping no. the Boricuas out here today. That's right, it's all for the greater cause. It's for Puerto Rico, we're supporting your earthquake folks. We're here for everybody. Everybody join forces together for you guys. What do you think about that, Chris? Well, first of all, great camera work. You got my good side. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> You got my good side, so that's number one. Uh, but, but that's just uh, a testament of... Yes when people come together doesn't matter what the obstacles are if it's 10 below snow hot whatever we're gonna get it done it was and just such an awesome time to see the community the latino community come out and, and represent and also the thing that was pretty unique was i was looking at the cars coming through dropping money and there was people dropping 20s 50s even hundreds in those buckets we had african americans we had white people asian we had all kind of nationalities supporting our island I mean, pretty impressive. Well, you know, I, I know uh, they, 
I don't know what the final total is, but I know I, within an hour after we stopped the actual collection, I know they got up to 25,000. So I'm pretty sure I know that it's north of 25,000. Uh, wow. I don't know what the uh, final number is, but I know the link is up there. Please, mm -hmm. please, please, if you have it in your heart, continue to give uh, Greater Bridgeport United for Puerto Rico. Um, a lot of people still in need, a lot of uh, people in fear. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine to go through a devastating hurricane. Not only that, people forget about the, the financial crisis that the island was in and then an earthquake. So uh, we, we need to find it in our hearts to give back to our, our fellow brothers and sisters on the island. Absolutely. With that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Sure. When we come back, a couple other things that we need to talk about, man. All right. Like the big birthday bash All coming right. up this uh, Thursday. You know, we're going to mention that. I'm excited. The uh, campaign kickoff. We're going to get to that momentarily. All right, let's All go. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so for you guys that are watching right now live on Facebook, don't go anywhere. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. We'll be back momentarily from this commercial break. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome to Aces Bail Bonds. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you need information regarding bail bonds and the bail bond process? Contact us at ACES Bail Bonds, where we are happy to give you a free bail consultation. You are in capable hands with our reputable agency. For fast, reliable bail bond service, get out of jail fast with ACES Bail Bonds. You can save time and money by calling ahead. We'll have the forms ready for you, with everything handled privately, discreetly, and confidentially at our office. For fast, reliable bail bond service, call Ace's Bail Bonds now. Welcome to Ramirez Restaurant. All right, you guys, welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez. We're broadcasting here from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So excited because I have Chris Rosario, state rep, here on the hot seat. And bam, there you are, Chris. You're back into back. the picture. I'm back. <laughs> My brother. So far, it's going well? What do you think? Good. I got, got a good flow, having a good time. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the big birthday bash. All right. Slash campaign kickoff that's taking place. It is a campaign kickoff, it right? It's a campaign kickoff, yes. Yep, taking place this Thursday at Amonel's yes. right here. Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Tell us all about it. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank all the residents and uh, people of the 128th District for supporting me and electing me for uh, three terms. I'm glad to announce that I'm running for a fourth term uh, as state representative. Uh, it's been the greatest job in the world. Uh, been able to give back to my community, to fight for the east side, to fight for the hollow. And uh, on Thursday, I'm be kicking off my campaign. It's open to everyone. Everyone's invited. Um, come, you know, have a good time uh, and uh, hear what my uh, plans are for the next term. Uh, this will be my fourth term, which will be uh, year seven and eight uh, at the Capitol. And uh, each year I learn more and more. And uh, uh, please come on out. It's going to be a good time. I promise you. You're not going to have a bad time. You're going to come out and have a good time. So come on out to Omanel's Thursdays from 6 to 8. So Rosario 2020. Rosario 2020. Campaign kickoff. Man, not to mention, you're about to turn 41. 41, yeah. Está poniendo viejo. Tengo las canas. I don't know if you're sure. Your camera have HD. Pero la tengo, la tengo. Hola, let's put the kid. All right, now, now show the people. Now show the people the canitas. Las canitas. <laughs> Dos, tres. Dos, tres. I, th I think I got you beat, though. Uh, I think I got you beat. A little bit. little salt and pepper. So... <laughs> so this Thursday, man, um, it's going to be a great time there in Amanel's, which is a Portuguese restaurant. Yes. And um, listen, you are invited to come on down. Well, let me not just slightly invite you that way, because if you come down, you got to pay. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a fundraiser. It's a fundraiser. <laughs> it's a fundraiser. So just to give a, um, I'm participating in the Citizens Election Program, uh -huh. uh, which is a uh, clean uh, government grant. Mm -hmm. So residents can give from either $5 up to $250. Uh, I have to raise uh, $5,000 in small contributions, and then the state kicks in another grant. But uh, I definitely want to invite everyone to come out. Uh, if you can give $5, give $5. If you want to give the max, you feel free to do so. Uh, but it's going to be a good time. I'm excited. 
Um, great support. We're getting a lot of calls. People are going to be in the house. I, I think you may get interviewed by Super Elite Entertainment. Hey. If you if you show <laughs> up. Uh, Absolutely. And, and, and as you said, you know, representing everybody in the city of Bridgeport, uh, the, the majority of the people in my district are, are Puerto Rican, but there's also Latinos, there's Portuguese, Brazilian, Cape Verdean. Shout out uh, to all my Cape Verdean uh, supporters out there. Como Busta. Uh -huh. uh, a little Creole for everybody Who's out that? there. Who's that? John Gomes, right? John Gomes. Big <laughs> shout out to John Gomes. John Gomes uh, is a good friend of mine and uh -huh. uh, uh, known him for a long time. And uh, he's going to be there tonight. So he, he's, he already knows he's going to be there. <laughs> so are you going to have a DJ there also? Uh, there's going to be some music. There's yeah? Gonna be some, yeah, it's a good time. A little bachata, good time. reggaeton. I don't know about bachata. It's something. It'll be something. <laughs> I'm not a DJ. So. <laughs> we'll have a little something. We'll have a little something, something. Oh, man. All right, Chris. So my next question for you is, what's on the agenda, man? What can we expect out of Chris Rosario 2020? What are your objectives for 2020, man? What well, can we expect? Listen, right now I'm working on, uh, I'm the statewide co-chair for the census count. Uh, so I've been working with Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz on getting a complete and accurate count on the census this Saturday at Gateway Community College at 10 a.m. We're having a co hard count committee uh areas that are hard to count like Bridgeport, Waterbury, New Haven. So we're having a statewide meeting and anybody who's interested uh, in participating that's 10 o'clock uh, at Gateway Community College. You can look it up on my state representative Christopher Rosario on Facebook. Uh, anybody who wants to work for the census, please reach out to me through that web page as well. I can get you in contact with the folks with the census. They're paying uh, between $23.50 and $25 an hour <coughs> to work for the census. So and we, they need people uh, that speak Spanish, that speak Creole, that speak Portuguese uh, in the city of Bridgeport. So it's a, it's a good uh, part-time paying job. So that's uh, something that's on the agenda. So best way to contact you, Chris, would that information on the screen right now be accurate? Um, they can reach out to you at the www.housedems.ct.gov, Rosario, or email you at Christopher Rosario, CGA, Connecticut, Gov? Both are perfect. Okay. Both ways, great ways to get me, whether email or through my website. Uh, my staff will, you know, either it comes directly to me or my staff will get it. Uh, so we're working on a lot of stuff with the census. Uh, we're, we're getting ready for a legislative agenda coming up, February 5th. Uh, we're going to have uh, a new session coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about the city of Bridgeport, the state of Connecticut. Uh, there's conversation on tolls or whether they're trucks only. Right now it looks like it's going to be trucks only, but you never know uh, with these proposals nowadays. So uh, just getting ready for that, doing, doing a lot. Awesome. Now, in regards to our city, yes. and you represent the 128th district of, of the city of Bridgeport, yes. Connecticut. Um, let's talk about that waterfront. Yes. We got that beautiful restaurant, Boca. Yes. We have uh, Starbucks, Bass Pro. A lot of space still vacant over there. Can we maybe anticipate getting a casino at some point? Well, listen, those conversations are still ongoing. I know uh, just recently we met with the administration here uh, in the city of Bridgeport, and I've had conversations with uh, folks with both tribes, uh, Mohegan Sun, um, Foxwoods, as well as uh, senators and state representatives from that part of the state about potentially doing something. Uh, those conversations are still ongoing, and I'm hopeful uh, that we can get something going, uh, whether it be on that parcel or, or somewhere else, uh, as long as it's in the city of Bridgeport. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, me, myself, I'm hoping that it does happen. It does become reality because I think it's going to be a game changer. I think it's going to it's going to bless a lot of people who are in need of an opportunity of employment. Well, you know, I, I think um, with that being said, I, I, I don't think. The casino itself would be the silver bullet to mm -hmm. cure all ails in the city of Bridgeport, but I think it would be that catalyst. Yes. It will be something, the beginning of a uh, greater and larger development on that waterfront that will create jobs, that will create opportunity, housing opportunities, uh, work opportunities for people here in the city of Bridgeport uh, to, to see us grow and be the city that we should be. That's right. Really quick, I want to announce a couple of people that, sure. people that are watching on Facebook right now. Sure. Uh, Pedro Ocasio, Don Ken. Uh, David Mati, um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Frizz Rivera, Jeff Baez, um, he put a whole bunch of little Puerto Rico flags. Why? Yeah. Why yeah. Hey, <laughs> Golden Hill, shout out to Jeff, Golden Hill. One love actually, to Golden Hill. Actually, he just mentioned not on Golden Hill. Not on Golden land. Hill land. I hear you. I hear you, brother. <laughs> um, also, wanting now, actually, Attorney Frank Riccio is watching as well. 
Uh, big shout out to Frank Riccio. Big shout out to Frank. Um, who's one of the, you know, he's actually an outstanding attorney here in the city of Bridgeport. Yes, he so, is. Um, any shout outs, shout outs you want to give to anybody that's watching? Well, listen, I want to give a big shout out to uh, all my friends, my family, my supporters, my kids. Chris, Anthony, Isabella, if you're watching out there, daddy loves you. Um, my wife, Kathy, Wanda Jeter, uh, Representative Antonio Felipe, Chief uh, Sean Sequeira from Shelton, Danny P. Danny P, if you're uh -huh. watching. Danny P. Danny P, <laughs> Nate, Nate and Marlon. ID, Council President, ID Nieves, shout uh -huh. out. Shout out to her. Shout, uh, shout out to everybody in the city of Bridgeport. I love you all. You have been the chair for a long time for the uh, Black and Puerto Rican Caucus. Yeah. What is that like? Well, I tell you what, one of the greatest honors, uh, besides being elected uh, to, to the uh, legislature, is to be the chair of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus. So these, are, these are your peers. Mm -hmm. These are your peers from all over the state of Connecticut that chose you to be their leader. And uh, I was able to do that for, two ter for a term, and uh, we got a lot done. We've got a lot of Puerto Rican judges. We got a lot of um, uh, African American judges. We got a lot of commissioners. Uh, during my tenure as chair, and uh, that was working with uh, then Governor Malloy, and uh, th those are talk about lasting impact. Mm. When you have, uh, and I, I'm not sure if uh, Senator Bradley touched upon this, when you have the judicial system, and I know you've been familiar working in your line of work in corrections and 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 as a marshal in the past, mm -hmm. you know, the majority of the people that go to court or dealing with the law, the the judicial system look like us. But the people that they're facing, whether it be on the judge, you know, uh, you know, on the bench, or even in the jury, don't look like us. Mm. So we tend to get harsher punishment. So uh, hopefully, uh, working uh, with future legislatures to diversify our bench, diversify our, our juries, uh, we can give our folks a, a better opportunity to have a better outcome. Chris, how hard is it to remain elected as an elected official? I mean, how challenging is that? Listen, every day. Um, it's harder and harder, uh, you, but you have to work harder and harder. But to me, I, I'm passionate. Uh, I just don't want to be stagnant. I want to keep up with the trends, keep up with my community to make sure that what's happening on the ground level, keep my ear to the street um, and see what the needs are. Because mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we work for them. Yeah. And these titles don't, I'm the state representative, but there was a state representative 100 years before me, and there's going to be a state representative 100 years a after me. We're just passing around in this moment of time. And right. uh, we're just blessed with the opportunity that the people give us. These titles don't belong to me. Mm. Uh, they, they belong to the people. Mm. And uh, as long as we're doing the people's work, we'll have the title. You mentioned work. Yes. You're constantly on the go. Um, does Chris Rosario ever get tired? Like, do you ever say to yourself, why bother? Why should I continue fighting when yet maybe sometimes you don't see an outcome? Well, you know, I, I give that I give that uh, credit to my support system, to my friends, my family, my wife. You know, and and the, the, I get down like anybody else when you get frustrated and you're you're, you're pushing in a direction and, and you don't see a positive outcome. Uh, but to have that good support system to to pick you up when you're down and uh, there's no, nothing that's too bad, nothing that's too good. Just keep, keep plugging along. But uh, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, but, and I give uh, c credit to anybody who decides to put their name on the line and run for public office. And I encourage folks to, to get involved in your, com to your community. Go to a city council meeting. Go to the Capitol. Testify if you're passionate about something. Uh, we deserve to hear your voice. Mm. Politics can at times be sketchy. And what I mean by that is sometimes people will try to tarnish your reputation. Yeah. Try to make you look bad. Come against you one way or another to try to hinder your progress and the progress you're trying to bring to the community. How do you deal with responding to outside people who are always trying to take you down? Oh, listen, I have my fair share. <laughs> I have my fair share of uh, detractors out there. You uh -huh. know, uh, not everybody's your fan. And, uh, but you know, listen, you stay true to your word, true to your work. Um, and, and those people that see you in a negative light, I, I just don't feed into that. I just, I'm sorry you feel that way and I, I keep it moving and uh, keep doing, uh, like I said, I put my faith in God and uh, do the work that needs to get done. And, and, and if you feel a certain way, uh, too bad. Yeah.
Yeah. I just had to mention that <laughs> because I mean, I know of you, and and I read different articles that they put out in regards to Chris Rosario, yeah. state representative, and you know, most good, but sometimes they'll try to sneak in a little negative uh, thing in there yeah. every now and then. So you know, I just I just needed to to hear it from your mouth on how do you respond, what's your stance, how do you approach um, outside influences that try to tarnish your reputation. Well, you know, I I I pride myself in being who I am. Uh, anybody who knows me my whole life know that I haven't changed. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm state representative or worked in the mayor's office, I'm still my nickname is Bam Bam. Uh, those, <laughs> that, right. th those that know me, they, they don't even call me Chris. They're like, that's Bam. Bam Bam so, Bridgeport. Bam Bam, Bam Bam Bridgeport on Instagram. <laughs> uh, so um, I am who I am. Uh, I stay the same and I treat you the same with respect. Where even if you, you don't see me with respect, I give you the respect of uh, it's, it's your opinion and you feel that way and, and, and that's that. And yeah. To move on. I try to keep, keep, keep it positive. That's right. I never speak ill about nobody uh, or anybody. I just do what I got to do. Yeah. Um, how about, for example, I'm probably going to get shot for bringing this one up, but <laughs> <laughs> racial profiling. Yes. You maybe don't want to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, racial profiling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just recently went through a situation which, which could have turned into a big ordeal, but you handled it with such class and the way you responded to it and the way you dealt with it was just so classy. And I have to take my hat off to you. Thank you. Because I just love the I just love the approach you took, which was right and correct. And I just want to congratulate you on that. But Thank what's you. your your response to that? Well, you know, uh, that that wasn't uh, a situation that uh, um, many many other people experience. There are people experiencing that right now, getting pulled over, probably right now at this very moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a moment in time where I felt a certain way. Uh, I can't tell you how I felt I can only ex I, I can express to you how I felt mm -hmm. in that moment and uh, I'm I'm still working with the police department to get to the bottom of what happened and it should have been something that uh, again I'm not expecting uh, special treatment over anybody uh, listen if I had broken a law or done something then I feel that yeah I should have gotten pulled over but I it wasn't doing anything to to, to break any law that there weren't being uh, pulled over or yeah. or detained so. yeah um, again, we're, we're, we're still working with the chief. I want to uh, commend the chief, Chief Perez, for, uh, you know, he's been looking into it. We're continuing to look into it. That's awesome. So, we're starting to wind down. Okay. We're coming towards the completion of the show. Your final words for the people that are watching before I hit you off with what I call the shotgun questions. Okay. Well, listen, I, I want to thank, first of all, thank Jason for having me on the show. Uh, please come on out to uh, Omanel's Thursday, 6 to 8, as we kick off the campaign. It's going to be a great uh, great time. And uh, anybody who knows, uh, been to any of my events, it is a good time. It's open. It's a welcoming atmosphere. So if you've never been to a campaign or a political event, please come on in, get to meet me and my team, and see what, uh, see what we're all about. Excellent. With that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break, Chris. Yes. When we come back... We're going to hit you off with what I call the shotgun questions, all okay. right? Simple questions that I ask, but sometimes they can be complicated for individuals to respond, which okay. is sometimes funny. But we'll be back momentarily, all right? All right? I'm ready. So for you guys that are watching right now live on Facebook, listening to us on our podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back momentarily with Chris Rosario, state rep on the hot seat with the uh, shotgun questions. We'll be right back momentarily. <laughs>
All right, you guys, welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez, and we're broadcasting here from the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So excited because tonight we have state rep Chris Rosario here on the hot seat. Man, we've been having a blast. He's been tearing it up, breaking down his personal life story, where he comes from here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. He's been giving us details of his objectives and agenda for 2020. And now I'm about to hit him off with what I call the shotgun questions. Let's go. You ready? I'm ready. All right, Chris. So oh, we don't need this. And we don't need that anymore. Favorite song? Favorite song. Oh, right now I'm listening to Vete by Bad Bunny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why. Right now I'm listening to that a lot. Vete by Bad Bunny. Yeah. All right. I would love to play it live right now on the show, but I think if I play it, they'll hit me with copyright and Facebook will <laughs> knock us off. They'll so I'm not going to play it. <laughs> yeah. I'm listening to a lot of Bad Bunny uh, a lot. Did you get to see him in concert when he came to Webster Arena? Want to know something? I was in uh, at the airport. My wife was at the concert. I was flying back. Uh, while well, he was in concert here, and then where I was, uh, where I was leaving at, uh -huh. that was gonna be his next tour stop. Oh, so I was, so I was literally, I was like, they, they were like, Oh, you're going to the Bad Bunny concert? I was like, He's in concert, uh, where, I, where I'm going home, and he was gonna be the next day where I was at. I gotta tell you, uh, I went last minute, it was awesome. I heard he puts on a great show, he put on a great show, and the stage that he, that he performed on. I've never seen a stage like that one. So big shout out to Bad Bunny if you're watching. I doubt it, but shout out. big big shout out to Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny, shout out to, <laughs> to all, all those artists. Favorite movie? Favorite movie. Um, I have plenty. Uh, I would say Goodfellas. Ah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, your favorite food, and we we like to eat. Somo boricua. Ah, man, food. <laughs> I'll say I like a steak. A steak. A steak. Yeah. So you say Medium well. Tomahawk steak. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought you were talking about maybe un pite de cebollao. Un pite de cebollao. I like a steak. Yeah. yeah. A I real like steak. Yeah, like real steak. Yeah, real <laughs> steak. Yeah, real steak. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite sport? Favorite sport? Football. Football. Yeah. And your team is Patriots? Pa Patriots, yeah. Okay. The Patriots, yeah. Okay. Did you get to watch that Aaron Hernandez uh, oh, man. on me. Netflix? Oh, yeah. The what, the... That's fascinating. Fascinating. Was it awesome? How, how you can go from literally being on top of the world to, you know, Literally, not caring. Not caring. Yeah. I thought that um, that three was it, it was a three part series was outstanding. Whoever put it together, which was Netflix, yeah. they did an outstanding job. You know, and watching it, I mean, I understand where Aaron comes from. You know, I mean, I can't sit here and say myself he's a murderer because I wasn't there. Yeah. But watching that, you just can't help but to feel a little sorry for him. It's just tragic. It's just yeah. tragic all the way around. Tragic for the victims. Tragic for him and his family. Uh -huh. I know he has a daughter. Uh, yeah. So it's just a tragedy all the way around. That's right. All right. Uh, your favorite car? My favorite car, Mustang. 5.0? Uh, no, 64. Shelby. Oh. 64 Shelby. Well, you got some good taste there, yeah. man. <laughs> you got some good taste. Um, favorite thing you like to read? Besides politics stuff. You know, I like to read. I like to read just motivational, uh, motivational books. I've been reading a lot of uh, Grant Cardone. Okay. Uh, I've been reading a lot, of, a lot of him lately. Uh, motivational stuff, just uh, you know, things that inspire. Nice. Okay. What's the favorite thing you like to do? You know, right now my favorite hobby right now is uh, just keeping up my fitness, going to the gym. Uh, being in this line of work, you don't really have a lot of time for hobbies. Uh, so softball and all that stuff has been out of the question. But I, I, I like, uh, you know, keeping up with my with my fitness. Okay. You grew up playing softball? Yeah, I played softball. Basically. Oh, yeah? yeah? Did you get to play with Kevin Kevin uh, Ayala? No, I didn't play with him. Okay. Like, yeah. I you know what I'm talking I, about. Yeah, I know what right? you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was outstanding, man. I heard, yeah. You see, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. The boy... The boy had, had some game. I heard uh, there's some balls still traveling that he hit from uh, <laughs> back in 98. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He was, he was outstanding. He was yeah, great. He was great. Um, what's your favorite word that you like to use? My favorite word. I'm trying to think. What is my favorite word? Progress. I like progress. We're always moving forward. We're mm. progressing. Okay. And why is that? Uh, well, you just mentioned it. You like moving forward. Like moving forward, <laughs> uh, not not to be stagnant. Always moving forward. That's right. What's the sound or noise you like to hear the most? What sound or noise you like to hear the most? Mm. Sound? Uh, just my daughter's voice. My daughter's voice. How many kids you have? I have three. Wow. Yeah, I have three kids. What ages? Twenty-two, eighteen, and ten. Oh, so they're big. They're big. They're wow. Big. 
I didn't have Sega Genesis and Nintendo. <laughs> So, uh, they <laughs> so you're busy. You're I'm busy. busy. I was busy. So you're busy at home. <laughs> you're busy there at the Capitol. You're busy in the city. You're just overall busy. How do you, you know what? And I, how do you do it? I'm just wondering, how do you manage, balance everything out? How do you, how do, you do it? Support. Uh, my family, my wife, my kids. Um, and just try, you, you always try to find that, that time for yourself. And uh, it's good to, you know, I try to go to as many events that I can in the district and but there's also times where you can't go to everything mm -hmm. uh, you, you gotta you gotta have that time for your kids and your family and and, uh, and i think that's important yes next question what's the favorite place you like to visit favorite place i like to visit i like to visit oh to be, believe it or not i like i like arizona yeah i like arizona and california what part of arizona uh, Phoenix area. Phoenix? Yeah. Okay. My sister lives in Arizona. Yeah. Chandler. Chandler? Yeah. Oh, that's over there. Uh, by Close Gilbert. to Phoenix. Gilbert. Yeah. 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 South, southeast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, other than your current profession, if you was able to do it all over again, what would Chris Rosario be doing right now? Yeah, I probably, uh, so, so, I want to say not really government, but just uh, mentoring. Something with mentoring. Uh, Folks uh, in in tough situations, whether it be a clinician or social worker, uh, probably helping others. Something helping others. Okay. Last question. Yes. If heaven really exists, when you arrive at the pearly gates, what do you want to hear God say to you, Mr. State Representative Chris Rosario, when you knock on that door? Oh, welcome. Welcome in. Welcome in. And hopefully, I get to see my father in Ezekiel. And I believe you will, because you have done an outstanding job as a representative of the city of Bridgeport and also the state of Connecticut. And um, I just pray that you continue being who you are, continue fighting the way you have been fighting, continue doing what you do on a day to day, on a week to week, on a month to month basis, because it's just the beginning of what what's to come. You know, you're just scraping the surface of of what's ahead of you. And uh, you have done so much for our citizens and, our, and for our city. I mean, it's not going unknown. So, you know, Chris, I just pray that you continue doing what you've been doing for all these years. You're a great person. Thank you, my brother. I yeah. appreciate that. It really means, uh, means the world to me. Your final words for the people that are watching right now. God bless you all, and uh, stay safe. Stay safe. And really quick, before we go, I just want to acknowledge a couple of people that are watching really quick on Facebook. Carmen Hernandez is saying, hi, Chris. Um, what Wellington Silva says, hi, Chris, as well. All right. Um, Eli Elias Rosario is giving you a, an All applause. Right. <laughs> My guy. Also, Ada, Ada Luz Davila and also Hick, uh, Hector. I need to get some glasses, I think. Hector Viz. People have some weird names on Facebook, <laughs> too, man. Write your whole name on Facebook. Just to, you know, yeah, right? abbreviate it. Nicknames. Yeah, nicknames. But again, Chris, thank you so much thank for coming you, down. Thank All you. Right? I appreciate you. This is your home. This is your house. -E. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There you go. Tastes good? It tastes real good. The water <laughs> tastes better here at the studio. This is your home. This is your house. And anytime you want to come down to the studio, which is located right here in downtown Bridgeport, this platform is always open for you at any time. Thank you, need you my brother. I All right? you. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you. All right. And for you guys that are watching right now on Facebook, on YouTube, listening to us on Spotify, Anchor, on our podcast, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. It has been such a great honor and a great privilege to have State Representative Chris Rosario here in the studio. Um, I hope you got something out of tonight's show, which I, I believe you did. Chris came here, he laid it all down, and uh, he shared of himself with us. So I'm so grateful. Thank you, Chris, for coming down to the studio again. We'll be here next week, next Tuesday, all right? At the same time, same place, same channel. Next week, we're actually going to have the owner of the Bijou Theater oh, here wow. in the studio on the hot seat. So it's going to be another good one. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. If it's not for you tuning in on a weekly basis, we will not be able to do this. This is your platform. This is your platform. And I keep repeating that. Has been created for you, the people of the community. Again, have a good night. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. We will see you next week at 7 p.m. God bless. Thank you so much for tuning in.